Let's also return to the issue of the truckers uh, and Justin Trudeau and his war on the freedom convoy. This has now been going on for several weeks, but it feels as if the kind of, certainly the media war on the truckers has really heated up in the past week or so. I mean, Ella, what have you made of it? Yeah, I mean, and, and Trudeau and himself and his comments have been increasingly, we've used the word hysterical a lot on this podcast this week, <laughs> but there you go. Ha, have, the world we live in. <laughs> have been at the extreme level. So, but also kind of naive. So he came out and said, you know, these uh, protests are unacceptable because they're causing disruption. It's like, do you know what a protest is? You know, it's such a cliche to say <laughs> that, but of course they're disruptive. Yeah. They're intending to be disruptive. They've shut down a bridge for you know, several weeks. For God's sake, that's like, what a weird thing to say. But what he's the behind his comments of it being unacceptable and the media reporting on lots of businesses now and including businesses in the US kind of complaining about the fact that Toyota's got shortages or, you know, all this evidence that, hey, presto, the protests are working yeah. because they are shutting, showing their power by shutting down um, society to argue for their political aims, um, is couching it in this kind of immorality that it's, like it's um, what they're doing is uniquely kind of amoral they're ruining people's lives I mean a similar thing has happened um, over here in relation to some of the protests that have been disruptive in the UK but the kind of fervor against them has been more marked in Canada because they are these truckers because they are kind of like baseball cap backwards wearing yeah. guys who are like you know, well not they're not just guys actually but that's the way they're kind of characterized as like Homer Simpson sort of types who carry around their jerry cans and there's a real kind of underlying prejudice about the way in which it's been reported you know that's so even in subtle ways so many of the images that are portrayed of them are like them flipping burgers out the back of their van and it's all you, it has that taste of it being you know just these kind of ignoramus truckers who are anti-vax and they're just getting in everyone's way and throwing their weight around when actually if you look at it there's a very principled nature to most of the protests some of it's a bit hairy but then lots of protests have its fringe movements which is an opposition to vaccine mandates and quite sophisticated arguments around bodily autonomy from a group of people who are much maligned but are central to the functioning of a large country. Yeah. And, you know, in a different context, you would see a lot mm -hmm. of the kind of lefty progressives in Canada and internationally, you know, cheering on the comrades for standing up against, <laughs> uh, you know, big business and, and having industrial action. But no. It's also funny the way that, you know, anti-vaxxer may be an unfair, fair slur against some of them it may be fair for some of them but it's funny how quickly all the other sort of liberal buzzwords have been mm. just reached for so they're not only anti-vaxxers they're also racist transphobic mm -hmm. islamophobic anti-black racist you know some of these use words used by trudeau himself and it's been amazing to see the kind of uniformity internationally because so much of the outrage is also becoming from the us media who have compared it to mm -hmm. their canada's january 6 type yeah. event the BBC, I was reading the BBC coverage and out of nowhere, they talked to um, a Canadian woman who said, who suddenly for some reason offers up the information that my daughter is trans and I feared for her safety. What's that got to do mm -hmm. with the, the sort of truckers thing? So there is this kind of just bizarre kind of smearing going on, mm -hmm. but we've, we're quite used to it, I suppose. It's in the Brexit playbook. It's in the Trump playbook. It's, no, no, we've seen it before. This is exactly what um, the elite and in which I include um, left wingers as well any form of working class people asserting themselves is fascist now. I mean, it's yeah. in every single is instance, you have the Brexit vote, it's fascism. Hmm. You know, you've got uh, the uh, Trump revolt, this is definitely fascism. Uh, the Gilets Jaunes in France, yeah. fascism. Every single time, this is just, and it, it speaks to, on the one hand, obviously, the fact, and what's been quite interesting about some of these revolts, particularly with the Gilets Jaunes, a kind of parallel, I think, which is quite interesting, which you have this kind of populist, uprising a little bit incoherent in places as some th some things around the fringes or whatever but its root is kind of a clear sort of anti-establishment in some cases quite principled message um but at the same time it exists completely outside of mainstream politics and yeah. also the left can't lead it doesn't know how to lead it and also doesn't want to lead it and so in those kind of accusations i think you just see a demonstration of how um, distant, the left in particular has, has, has got from any kind of form of genuine sort of um, working class power and assertion of that power. Um, because now when they see those people who they claim historically to represent taking to the streets to defend their rights, their knee-jerk reaction is, oh my God, it's Nazi Germany again. I mean, yeah. that is so telling, I think, on this, this story, but also many others before it, definitely.